In this tutorial, you'll learn the smart way of removing backgrounds using Adobe Photoshop. Notice I'm using Photoshop CC, which stands for Creative Cloud, but this will also work with earlier versions of Creative Suite, such as CS5 or CS6, on both Mac and Windows. I'll click the Adobe logo to close the splash screen. Photoshop offers a variety of methods for removing backgrounds. Let's start with the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> for example, the fastest way to remove a background is with this tool here in the Tools panel, Hidden behind the basic eraser tool is the magic eraser tool. And this tool is sometimes truly magical. Even with the default tolerance of 32 that you see here, one click of the mouse has removed the white background. So the checkerboard square pattern you see indicates transparency. And if you're happy with that, you're done. However, this is not necessarily a best practice because I just destroyed all the pixels on that layer. So as I'll show you in the next example, it's a good idea to duplicate your layer before you do that. Uh, the other thing that's very important is that you don't save this as a JPEG file because JPEG supports does not support transparency. Um, you'd have to use like PSD as in Photoshop document or perhaps PNG as in Portable Network Graphics because if you save this as a JPEG file, the white background will still appear again. So it's very important to use a file format that does support transparency. Now let's look at a more practical example on how you might professionally select and perhaps mask uh, an image to get rid of the white background. I'm going to switch to the quick selection tool here and first I'm going to duplicate the background layer by right clicking on it and choosing duplicate layer and then I'll just go ahead and accept that name for now and click OK and then on this background layer right here I want to click the eyeball so that's turned off and it's also protected. In case anything goes wrong I can always revert back to the background layer. So now I'm just going to drag with the quick select tool and you can see first it grabs those shells and then if I hold down and drag some more and just tap, it'll select the rest of this plate here. So quick select can quickly select something, especially if it's on a high contrast edge as you see here. And once you have a selection, you can use the layer menu to choose layer, new, layer via copy. Command J on the Mac or Control J as in jump up to a new layer on Windows is a really useful command. As you can see here in the Layers panel, it's now copied that plate to a new layer. So if you switch to the Move tool, and notice in the tool options here I have Auto Select as well as Show Transform Controls on, so you can see the little handles here, as well as just click to move a layer. So if I press and hold down the mouse, I can just drag and move this up here, and you can see that there's no white background around this particular plate. Now if I want to get you know the rest of these things, I could probably get most of this with the Quick Select tool, but you may need to use a variety of selection tools, including the classic lasso tools, as well as polygonal and magnetic lasso tools. Uh, this is not necessarily a tutorial on selections, but just know that once you get a selection, you can use that same strategy. And let's look at another approach, for example, how you get rid of the white background around this big plate here. Again, I'm just going to use Quick Select, and those pixels are on the background copy layer, so it's very important that that's selected. And then I'm just going to drag over this dish. And it's not grabbing the pixels on the plate above it. It's grabbing what's behind it. And then this button right here is really useful. Refine Edge is available with all selection tools. And when you click that, you'll actually be able to do things, for example, like maybe feather or smooth out the edge a little bit so it just has a little bit uh, softer of a transition to the background. And this is a very powerful menu. The most important part is that you select down here where to output Rather than just the selection, if you choose New Layer with Layer Mask, watch what happens when I click OK. You can see all of the pixels have been removed. However, I still have my background copy. I can still turn that on and then select those other objects and copy those to new layers and stack them up there as well. So let's look at another example of how, rather than remove a background, you might want to change it to like black and white. This is one of my favorite effects in Photoshop. You can see how you know, red gets red, it just really highlights that bike. And this is a really simple thing to do in Photoshop. You simply select the red bike layer here. And then, again, you can use Quick Select, but I'm going to shrink my brush by tapping the left bracket key a few times. And notice that shrinks my brush size here in the tool options. This is how the pros do it for selecting things with Quick Select. You just tap, and then I just, I'm looking for that particular red color. And then on the Select menu, there's a really useful command here that says Similar. That's going to grab similar red colors. However, notice it grabs some red up here as well as over here. Now I'm going to use what's known as quick mask mode. This little round peg in a square hole here allows me to switch to quick mask mode. And I can kind of see that in like a green screen. And I just need to rinse away. 
by switching from black with block to knock the mask away. But I just want to switch the colors here so that I can just erase using the brush tool. That's what I want to do. With the brush in hand, I'm just going to grow my brush a bit and just drag over this. I'm going to hit the letter X so I can switch to the black color and just erase away that red. I'm just getting the red out. So just this is much easier to use. The brush can be refined as well. And I'm just wanting to perhaps I'm going to hit the letter X here and restore this area here to unblock it. And once I'm happy with the selection, I can simply come out of quick mask mode by hitting the letter Q or that button there. And then I want to select the inverse of the bike. So I'm going to go to the select menu and choose inverse. Now everything but the bike is selected. So I can simply add a little layer adjustment here with this little half moon shape. If I pop that up and choose black and white, that does a much better conversion to black and white. In fact, you can use different filters, for example. If I want to use maybe like a red filter, for example, you can see it kind of bumps it up there. You can also do like a duotone as well. Maybe I'll lighten that up a little bit. So now that's non-destructive. As you can see, I can turn that layer on and off and it hasn't hurt the pixels. So there's a variety of methods that you might use uh, to just knock out the background on something and, or just in, you know, enhance it uh, with the power of Photoshop. So, as you can see here at thinkbiglearnsmart.com, we have a variety of classes for Photoshop, including project-based training. If you'd like to bring your samples to work, we'll be happy to help you get those the way you want with a private class, as well as regularly scheduled open enrollment classes. Plus, if you're seeking certification, we'll be happy to help you pass the Adobe Certified Associate as well as Adobe Certified Expert exams. Thanks for watching the video.